Hello everyone. Today I am going to take you on a garden tour of my front yard garden beds. Well, welcome to my YouTube channel, 90% Native. My name is Michelle and I grow native plants and I garden for the wildlife. So like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and take you on a tour of these front yard garden beds that are right in front of my porch area. These are the places where I am trying to put in as many native plants as I can, but also keep the area as formal as possible because it is my front yard and I really want people to see that you can use native plants for your front yards and it doesn't have to be a big hot mess and sequestered to the back. So I'm gonna show you all of that. And also there are so many changes that I wanna make this fall in my garden beds up here and in the back. So I will talk a little bit about that. Okay, and here we go for the tour. All around here in this bed, I have my green and gold. And you guys know I love green and gold as a ground cover. This is a part sun area and it's very moist and it's doing really well there. Along the driveway, that's relatively new. That's also green and gold, and I just planted it on the edges, and that is really, really dry. Afternoon sun, but mostly shade for the rest of the day, and that's also doing really well too. So both conditions, just do not put this in full sun. It won't like it. So over here, back by the rain barrel, I have three um, sweet pepper bush and they were just finishing up flowering and it's a, just a really really great plant for the pollinators and it really likes part sun and a moist area so these have done really well here I'm not sure that I'm able to capture how it looks on the, the video but it, I promise you it looks good and then right here we have our my dwarf father gillows which I talk about all the time I have three of them that go around this crepe myrtle tree which I wish was a different tree but anyway they're looking great keeping their shape their leaves look really good and they will be putting on their fall show which I'm really excited about pretty soon here around the tree I have Carex Sprengali and that Carex is a native just slightly north of me in Maryland and Pennsylvania and I have cut that back twice this season so it's done for this year. I might cut it back in the fall because I am thinking about experimenting with um, cutting back in the fall instead of the early spring and around the crepe myrtle crepe myrtle I have a coral honeysuckle I think I'm gonna move it because I don't like how tangly it looks but you know and then I have some self-seeded great blue lobelia and cardinal flower over there I'm gonna let the cardinal flower go and I'm gonna move that great blue lobelia and I'll show you where in a second so coming up here I have Brunnerette Jack Frost that might not be its permanent location. It's staying there now. I may take this Maryland Dwarf Holly and move it here to take up this whole area. Not 100% yet. Or, or it may go in the middle there where the cardinal flowers are. But anyway, I have another Maryland Dwarf Holly over here and then over there. And that is going to go down. Two of those are going to go down here in the new um, woodland garden that I have been working on over the past year so then I have this line of Carex amphibola and I just don't know why it doesn't do as well as the Carex amphibola down here so I'm probably going to remove that and grab some green and gold from down there and just let the green and gold take over this whole this whole section just because it seems to love it it works well so I don't think that I need to fix something that's not broken here are the Aronia melanocarpa low scape mound. These ones have survived. I was wondering if they would survive through any deer browse. They have. I did keep them sprayed more than most things. This is actually the Maryland Dwarf Holly right there that will move. And I got three, uh, two of those on super clearance 
um, last year and I really need three because I always plant in odd numbers. And so I took a cutting and I put it right there. So I'll let you know over time how well that does. Here are my gem box ink berries that were down over there in front of the porch that just were getting like way too much sun. They are coming back. They might not look perfect, but they definitely are springing back this year. And then behind it right here, we have a Southern Gentleman Winterberry, which I need for all of my dwarf winter berries um, to get the berries. <laughs> and then we have a cultivar nine bark. I think that's Little Devil. And then I have a couple royal ferns in there that'll grow high. So this area is really shaping up and I'm really just loving how it is turning out. I may actually remove the rain barrel because I'm not using it like I should. If I do that, I may, I'm thinking about smooth hydrangea for that area, but we'll see. We shall see. Down here, um, my dry uh, riverbed has done well with the water that comes down this way. So this is fox sedge and then green and gold mixed in with the um, cardinal flower, which the bumblebees are just robbing nectar all day long off of these. Um, I do see the hummingbirds down here, which is great. Um, but yeah, those, those little bumblebees are stealing that, that nectar there. Over here, we have Siberian iris that has gone over. And then three more of those little devil nine barks. I'm going to think of something to put all around those nine barks as a ground cover, but not a ground cover in the sense of like a matte ground cover. So I'm still thinking on that. I do have a new batch of fox sedge that I grew from seed that I'm thinking about putting um, in there amongst the cardinal flower as well. So we'll see. Um, I'm likely going to take out the Carex amphibola all through here. I just kind of want a little more cleaner look. And so I'm fine with just the, the swath of um, aromatic aster here. These are gonna start blooming here shortly, which I'm really excited about. The bumblebees love them. Oh, here's a, a little berry on the low skate mound choke berry. You can see on these leaves though, I will warn you that this low skate mound does get attacked by the uh, Japanese beetles. So do you guys remember when I cut all these as though they were like this high and I cut them all back and they looked like just sticks and I promised you that they would flush back and they would survive. Well, this is what they look like now. So they are doing just fine. They're not native, so I didn't care if something died anyway, but there they are. And then back there, my aromatic aster experiment didn't go as planned. There's one. I'm actually probably gonna get back in there this week and cut those non-native bleeding hearts back and see what we have in there. Right here is my patch of golden ragwort. And I'm not sure if it's staying or going. I'm gonna be doing a lot of changes this fall. So um, we'll see the, the shamrock inkberry in there is doing fine but it's just a you know lonely soldier in there i'm not sure what i'm going to end up doing oh i did take i had little lemon nine bark and i took two cuttings there and there i'll let you know how these cutting experiments work um, later and then in the spring if they come back lots of green and gold a lot of this green and gold is going to move down here and then over down further on the driveway. I don't think this green and gold right here is going to love how much sun this area gets. Um, and I'll probably leave enough to see if it does actually like it. But then we have some self-seeded uh, great blue lobelias in here. One of my absolute favorite plants, great blue lobelias. And I am going to take all these self-seeded ones and then the one we had over there and I'm going to replace the steeple bush over here which I'll talk about in a second okay right here 
what I did is I put um, six blue flag iris, iris first the color that I grew from seed last year, because look at all of these leaves. They're all like round and you have all of these leaves that look exactly the same. And there's nothing I can do about, you know how hard it is to get these non-native azaleas out of the ground? So I'm just gonna have to work with it. So I thought having those blades, those big, huge blades of the native iris would really contrast nicely. In addition, I have another with this little lemon nine barks there that have a different type of leaf. So that's great. And I also realized last year I did a little cutting here. I thought I did some choke berries too, but I don't see them. And that um, looks like it's doing pretty well. So later in the fall, I'm gonna move it like right back here and maybe eventually I can get like a grouping of three around there. I did three chokeberry cuttings here. One, two, three. That one doesn't look good. So I don't know how that one's going to live. Um, here are the hookah, hookah americana. So the American lum, uh, lum root right here that it has already been cut back. It was cut back a long time ago. I should have done a better job of cutting back those stems because it doesn't look as tidy as I'd like it to. And then we have, well, actually, let me just say we have a couple sensitive ferns popping up and I am moving those to a different area of the garden now. But here are my three dwarf winter berries, which I really love. And they get the berries on them. You'll see them right there. And it's really um, ornamental and great, but I think they're too big for here. And I think I'm gonna think that about the smooth hydrangea along the back too, but I'm going to move those. And I have cuttings of the um, Aronia melanocarpa low skate mound that I did last fall and that I'm gonna replace. So I'm going to replace the winter berries with the Aronia low skate mound since I was able to keep the deer off of it um, down there. And, and then I'll probably leave the nodding onions here if you see that bumblebee there it's like the only pollinator strong enough to hang upside down and pollinate the nodding onions now moving to this side of the sidewalk i started to cut the steeple bush back because i'm moving them if i wasn't moving them i would keep them for this great winter interest this was just a real true pink color when it was in bloom it was really really pretty but it is taller than I want here on this side of the walkway so I am going to cut those back I just stopped because I wanted to see what it looked like for you know maybe winter interest but I am going to I've made the decision I am going to move all of my rose mallows that I talked about in my previous video I'm going to move those to the back with the other rose mallows and I'm going to replace the steeple bush i'm going to put the steeple bush over there and then all those random great blue lobelias i'm going to put here and then i have a flat of nodding onion that i seeded and i'm going to put those like in a line right here and maybe intermixed with the brood beckia to try and keep the deer off of some of those plants um this Caryxanthobola here and here always seems to do well, so that is going to stay. I have marsh marigold in there, and I don't like the way the leaves look, so that may eventually go. I'm moving back to this side of the front garden. I have a patch of Handsome Harry or Meadow Beauty, and I just absolutely love these. They do kind of take over a little bit, but that's okay. I'm just gonna keep this patch managed here and the bumblebees love them and i like the way the the true green contrasts with that um i'll put the name up on the screen i can't remember no actually i'll look a juniper youngstown this one the, well i'll talk about that in a second anyway i really like that patch there i'm just going to keep it in check that juniper youngstown has this great mound um, hopefully it doesn't get too big, but in the fall, when it starts to sense cold, it turns orange and yellow and, and it just looks fantastic. So back here, I have those three smooth hydrangeas that I did a video about 
last winter. I think that my wild ginger does not like, oh, look at that stilt grass. See, now's the time of year when you have to get the stilt grass if you're out here looking around. It hides, I, I swear it hides. And then it's like a strategy. Anyway, I might move a lot of this ginger um, over there where it's a little drier. We shall see, but the smooth hydrangeas there will be regeneratively pruned to the ground. Those were, remember, just baby sticks this past year. And we had one bloom. Okay. These, this on either side of the porch, those are um, dwarf rhododendron, rhododendrons, I think. They're not native. And then here is a patch of um, our native wild stone crop, which was doing fantastic. Um, wondering if when the temperatures go down, if this is actually gonna bounce back and be beautiful again this fall. You can see here, the handsome Henry really does seed around, so you gotta, if you don't want it there, you gotta get it out. But you could actually root this um, somewhere else or put make it a cutting in a um, container, and they take very easily to that. Okay, so back to this side. The marsh marigold, I'm not sure it's gonna stay there. I'm going to move this gray owl. Not sure what I'm going to put there. Not sure if that's going to be a continuation of the great blue lobelia or what, or maybe more nodding onion. I don't know. I'm going to take that gray owl. I'm going to put it right here. So we have gray owl, gray owl, and gray owl. I'll have to move that Hypericum prolificum. I'll probably just put that guy like right here on the other side of the path. And I'll talk more about what I'm doing in the fall for this section. So then here is the Swamp Rose Mallow that I'm gonna put the steeple bush there. So the steeple bush will come out from there, go over there, and then I wouldn't cut it back if it was over there because those um, stems have a lot of winter interest. And then this is my hedge of Little Henry, Itea, oh, Virginica, I think. Um, does really well here because there's some moisture and then my Hypericum prolificum one two and then I have a little cutting in there in the middle there um, in front of this gray owl I have Brunnera um, Jack Frost and I think this is Roseanne uh, geraniums Kind of just trying to get like a little bit of a contrast here. I think it looks really good. So Roseanne is not um, off of the native. Um, so anyway, I like that contrast. What else do we have over here? Oh, there's some switchgrass mixed in with the Swamp Rose Mallow, which I like, which is unusual because switchgrass is more of a drier plant, but I think it's okay over here. Oh, here's another. Japanese silk grass, you guys gotta get those. Uh, let's see. And then I have more green and gold down here, which seems to really like this spot now that it's covered. So this is what it looks like from coming out of my front door. Still work in progress. If those smooth hydrangeas don't work out, then I'm gonna replace them and I'm just gonna replace them with Christmas fern and I'm not gonna try and fool around trying to figure out a wet, full shade shrub because it's just not happening. And you can see where it's drier over here that the that ginger looks better as does this ginger over here. And the other gingers that are in these wetter areas are just not doing well. So I'll re rethink the ground cover there. I might not even do a ground cover here if I have the three um, Christmas ferns. Maybe I'll do five. One, two, three, four, five. Although I don't know how that'll look. Anyway, we shall see. So yeah, that is what this front bed is looking like right now. Lots of changes coming in the future. I hate this Japanese pack of Sandra. Oh, anyway. So yeah, this is what it looks coming back down. I think it looks pretty good. It's getting there. It's getting to where I want it to be.
Okay guys, if you wanna hear more about some plants that are blooming in my yard, then I will link to a video here that I just did on three plants that are blooming and bringing all the pollinators. Other than that, thank you so much for taking your time and being here with me today. Happy gardening and I will catch you again next time.